Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today I'll be showing you how to set up the ADB and fastboot environment on your computer running Mac OS. Now this is just the basics and we're going to do this by installing or using the Android SDK command line tools uh, to download the latest version of the platform tools. I call them Android tools for uh, simplicity but it is indeed the platform tools that we need to download. So this is just your ADB and fastboot and today I'll be showing you how to do it on a Mac as requested. Uh, so this is just something I can link to people uh, whenever they need to and I'll show you the basics of using the commands uh, ADB and fastboot on a Mac so you can follow pretty much any video once you get or we'll go through this advice so first off you're gonna already have to want to have downloaded the JDK and installed it so this is just the Java development kit and this basically allows the uh, more of the, the kind of behind the scenes things to work so this is required for the SDK manager I believe it's called so, uh, which is where we use or what we use to download the latest version of platform tools so we can choose from this uh, the Oracle site here either 11u1111 or 8u112 so it doesn't really matter I've just gone ahead and already downloaded uh, this version and to do this you just accept the license agreement and then press the download button so it should be a DMG and I've already downloaded this uh, as you can see down here and it's already in my downloads folder as well and the other thing you want to download is, of course, the uh, Android SDK tools, uh, command line tools. So to do this, we're going to go to the, the Android Studio site, and we're going to click on Download Options over there. And then you're going to see this. Uh, we don't want the Android Studio. Uh, well, we don't want Android Studio. We just want the command line tools. So we're going to scroll down past uh, underneath this, and we're going to download the one for Mac. So if you tap on that, or if you click on it, you need to check the terms and conditions and then click this blue download button to download it and it'll come in a zip file like this uh, down in this lower corner here and if you're downloading this using Safari it will pro it would sometimes or usually automatically extract it so you can get uh, so you'll get a tools folder instead of the zip downloaded so I'm going to open up the downloads folder here and we can minimize our Chrome window now I'll make this bigger if you can't see it but uh, we basically need this tools zip or the tools folder if you downloaded it using Safari and of course we'll have the JDK DMG so first up we're going to open up the JDK DMG because we need to install the JDK before we start running the uh, SDK manager so this is just a package and we're going to double click on that to install it we're going to hit continue continue enter in our password and hit install now the JDK doesn't really need to be up to date all that often but it is best to for security concerns but if you happen to have an older version lying around, you really don't need to download a new one just for this. So next up, uh, we're going to hit close because that finished quite quickly. We're going to keep the installer. We can close this and of course eject the DMG. Now once you've done that, we're going to double click on the tools zip file that we downloaded. So right now, we're going to open up the tools zip file here. Or if you already downloaded it using Safari, you would have had a folder come out instead called tools. And if I just extract this now, you should see what I mean exactly. So you'll get this instead of the zip file if you downloaded it using Safari. I'm going to open up the tools folder and then you see this Android uh, file here. The kind is the Unix executable, so you, oh, EXEC for the icon. Okay, I'm expanding the wrong one, but you get what I'm saying. So just double click on this Android file and you'll say, oh, we can't open it. But I think on Sierra and above, there's no longer an option in system preferences and security and privacy to allow apps downloaded from anywhere anymore. So if you happen to be on Sierra, um, you'll need to right click and press open. But if you're anything below, you can probably change the setting. Uh, although you might want to leave it as is and just right click on it. Oops. And then tap, uh, click on open and then hit open. So it's just a little extra step. And this will open up the Android SDK manager. Uh, you can see it's going to fetch some URLs here to make sure everything is updated and we'll just leave that to do its thing for a little bit. Now once that is done, you're going to see that it wants to install 10 packages and we don't want that because we don't want the entire SDK on our computer. So I'm going to tap on the deselect all button if it lets me and then after that uh, I'm going to only check the platform tools uh, entry, this one that's highlighted in grey apparently and I'm going to hit install just that one package 
and then accept the license. If I can get onto it, there we are. I'm gonna tap on accept, hit install, and this will download it uh, to our computer. And once this finishes downloading, we'll be able to test out, and I'll show you how to use ADB and Fastboot. So it's gonna say it's done. So we can hit close, and then we can close out the SDK manager. We can quit terminal as well. And now uh, you'll see that nothing has changed here. It should be mostly the same. And if you hit back, you're gonna see a folder called platform tools. So pretty much on the root, or one folder back from where you launched the Android file from the this tools folder. So we're gonna open up the platform tools folder and you're gonna see our ADB, uh, EX, or not EXE, sorry, yeah, ADB file and a fastboot executable. Now you can see these are able to be run in terminal, which is what we need, and I accidentally opened that. Uh, because you can see that it didn't do anything, it just ran itself and it outputted whatever it was supposed to output if you don't enter any parameters onto it. So what we need to do is open up a terminal window, and like I've already accidentally opened it, uh, terminal, or you can just go over to Spotlight, wrong button, Spotlight and type in terminal, or go to the launch pad and do that, but whatever. Just open up terminal, and if there's an easier way to open this up and already have it open to our platform tools folder instead, uh, please feel free to let me know how. So we need to change the directory whenever we want to use ADB or Fastboot, unless we move it to like the user bin folder, at least on Linux you can do that, and that way you can just run it from any uh, terminal window and it should recognize what you're trying to type. But to keep it a little bit more simpler, and because this is almost like muscle memory to change the directory, we are just going to change the directory using a simple command called cd, which stands for change directory. So we can type in cd, leave a space, and this is what you'll have to do from now on unless you decide to move it to the user bin folder. Um, that is optional, of course. Uh, so you'll need to change the directory to exactly where these files are uh, because that is just how it's going to work. So I'm going to hit back so we can get the folder, and I'm going to drag the folder in. And that'll drag, or that, when we hit enter, that'll change our directory to platform tools. And I think it's ls. Yes, uh, if you type ls, you'll be able to see all the files that are in that folder. So you can see that ADB and Fastboot are available uh, just over here. Now I should make this a bit bigger for us to see. Uh, so those two are there, so we, it means we're in the right folder at least. And that means to run these files now, sorry if I'm talking a little bit too fast, but to run these files within the terminal window, once you have changed directories, because that is very important, otherwise you're going to get something like this, command not found. That is because we haven't moved it to the bin folder uh, that I was talking about earlier. So to run executables that are within a folder, we need to go put a dot or a full stop and a forward slash and then type in our executable name, in this case, fastboot. Now if we hit enter, we're gonna get all the parameters that we can use using fastboot. Uh, you can see that's quite a lot. And that is how you're going to enter commands in. So for example, on my other videos, I'd get you to type in just fastboot, flash boot, or flashboot, fastboot, reboot dash bootloader, for example, a command. And on Windows, it actually does both. It checks your system paths or variables, and then it will check uh, whatever is in your folder, I believe. So if you have the fastboot executable and you've changed your folder, uh, in Windows, you don't need to type in the dot forward slash, but on Linux and Mac OS, you'll need to do a dot forward slash there to denote that you are looking for an executable within that folder. So if we just have these up, uh, similarly, I'll just type a few more commands to uh, kind of familiarize yourself with that. So, of course, to do ADB, you're going to do the same thing, dot forward slash ADB reboot, for example. Of course, uh, I don't have a device plugged in to do that. And if you want to use a fastboot command, it will be dot forward slash fastboot. So now, uh, once you understand that you'll need to put dot forward slash to run the executable, you can pretty much use or follow any guide or video that asks you to use ADB or fastboot. Uh, just type in that dot forward slash in front and make sure you've changed your directory to the platform tools folder and you'll be right as rain. So I think that's that'll wrap up this video about now. Uh, thank you very much guys for watching and if you have any other tips or any other videos that you'd like to see as a matter of fact, you can feel free to leave it down in the comments below and I'll try to get to it as soon as possible. There has been a backlog of videos so far that I'm supposed to be doing, but um, my phone was a little bit broken for me to actually do it, so they are on delay a little bit, and I do need to do one more video regarding the Mac, but 
um, reconfiguring OBS on this is a little bit harder than I thought so I might have to use the old-fashioned camera for that but uh, at least for this video we know how to set up the platform tools on a Mac and how to use the commands properly so and that is all for this video guys as, uh, as usual thank you for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one